and then uh, that which allows the organism to operate more efficiently and live longer. So the, the part about the immune system is uh, as we get older and as rats get older, our immune system starts to degrade. And the reason it starts to degrade is because the T cells, which are one, one set of cells that are in the immune system, they learn to adapt to immunological attacks, but at some point they're supposed to destroy themselves after they've done the cell. Unfortunately, as we get older, the T cells don't do that. They hang around and they stop the creation of naive T cells, which are there to protect the organism in the future. So the immune response degrades. This is uh, all about aging. Uh, so let me take a step back. Why do we care about aging? Why do we care about an immune system that works as we get older? A aging is about suffering and death. We, we don't want to suffer, we don't want to die, oh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, that's why we care about longevity, that's why we care about anti-aging. These uh, diseases that we are 100 times more likely to get when we're 65 than when we are 35. We do not get these when we are young, or we are very unlucky if we do. These diseases also cause suffering and death. That's what we're trying to avoid. So at this point you might ask is, are we the only people in Australia that cares? I'm pretty sure most consumers care about longevity. They want to live longer. But society does care, but in a really kind of strange way. Without modern medicine, we, none of us would probably live up to 40. Most of us would die in child, either in childhood or in childbirth. And in that way, society has provided us, or has prolonged our lives with modern medicine. And it does try to reduce the suffering. But it doesn't do anything to, to maybe stop these diseases in the first place, the previous diseases I showed you, by attacking ageing at its source. Uh, so this is to remind me to talk about another story. Uh, which is kind of relevant to the, the modern society not caring about ageing. Uh, there was, I remember reading about this guy who is a South American, very Catholic, uh, and the Pope at the time was saying, you cannot use birth control, and unfortunately he had many kids and he didn't want any more kids. So what he decided to do was put a small hole in the, in the side of all of his condoms, so therefore it, he wasn't actually using birth control anymore because it was faulty, so he wasn't sinning. Right? He could say, I'm not sinning because it's no longer a birth control. But it's actually quite effective, I'm not having any more kids. So this is, this is a story that reminds me of, of society. It's like a, we are not going to overtly extend our lives, but we're, somehow we will through modern medicine. There's a better way, right? Why do we care? This is just about us. I'll just quickly go through this. I had a humanist and a transhumanist uh, definition, which you probably don't care about. Um, but this idea of society not allowing itself to hope for a longer life or society in general thinking that long life is bad, we can only live our natural span spans. Then it came along this word called health span. At first I hated the word health span because it seemed to me it was a, a lack of ambition. We want to live long times, or I want to live a really long time, but health span was kind of oh, no, we don't care about long lives, all we care about is healthy lives. So initially I didn't like the term. But in fact, it's turned into a really good way for researchers to say, hey, I don't care about, I'm not trying to create anti-aging therapies, I'm just trying to make us all healthy. And so there's, I think part of the reason uh, that we've had an uptick in research in anti-aging therapies is as a result of this health span. Researchers in the past wouldn't be allowed to say, I want to live a thousand years. But they are allowed to say, we can invest and make ourselves all healthy and have less suffering. But it's a Trojan horse, the health span, a good Trojan horse. I think anti-aging therapies which will help us with health span will actually help us live longer as well. Uh, the other aspect is with the, the health span methodology is supposed to make us live for a very long time and then compress our morbidity right at the end, where we presumably, after a long, whatever you want, 80, 80 years, 100 years, 120 years, in the last week we just fall over dead because <laughs> that's our natural span. <laughs> uh, I, I personally don't think that health span 
uh, is going to work like that. But it's positive. Okay. So I've talked about why ageing is bad. I've talked about health span and its importance in the research of ageing. Now I'm going to talk about a few different ways that people focus on ageing research. The first one is about adjusting metabolism. The idea is that if we can tinker with metabolism, we can live longer. Meta metabolism causes damaging products in our bodies. If we can somehow play with it a little bit, maybe we can extend that health span and maybe even lifespan. The second type of focus is one which I prefer to investigate or we'll talk about. It's called SENSE. Has anyone heard about SENSE? Aubrey de Grey. Aubrey de Grey, right, that's exactly right. Aubrey de Grey created in the late 90s, early 2000s. His idea was, it's probably not his original idea, but he brought it all together. And he, the SENSE program says, we have metabolism. Metabolism is doing a really complicated job. It's really hard to fix. We should just let it do its thing. Unfortunately, sometimes metabolism causes damage and then the damage causes pathology, all those diseases I showed you earlier. So what we should do instead is we should get rid of this damage which causes the pathology. And there are, according to the SENSE protocol or program, you don't have to read all this, seven forms of damage. Uh, they came up with seven, or Aubrey came up with seven forms, and the last type of damage that was discovered, according to him, was in the 50s. So he's pretty confident that well, the Sense Foundation is quite confident that there are these are the most important types of damage that we need to remove from the organism in order to extend our lives. It's just fit within the slide here. Senolytics fits within this targeted ablation of death-resistant cells. So I'll talk about senolytics in a sec, but it is a it is one of these attacking one of these seven types of damages that that Sense uh, talks about. Sources of damage that I'm changing, I just mentioned that they can't find, or at least the Sense Foundation asserts that there aren't any more types of damages that we need, damage within the organism that we need to fix. Ah, so this is the third type of uh, focus where we just try and fix the individual diseases themselves, uh, which doesn't do a lot for health span. In fact, part of the issue with health span is we, we're using technology to extend the lives of very frail people. I think that's a bit like poor, right? So, initially in this area of aging research, there was quite a lot of uh, maybe conflict between metabolism and sense. I think that conflict's going away. I think there's a lot of intersection. I think from the layman's point of view, therapies, anti-aging therapies, whether they're discovered or researched by the metabolism folks or the kill switch folks or the sense folks, it's kind of it's kind of all kind of ending up in the same area. So, and the senolytics, for example, the, the metabolism folks are really excited about senolytics as well. It's not saying, oh, this is, this is obviously fits within the sense paradigm. They're super excited about senolytics. Finally, we get to senolytics. Uh, fits within the sense paradigm. It improves health span by removing old cells. You can think of old cells or old malfunctioning cells like a poison. They poison the organism. They don't allow the organism to function properly. Uh, you can probably read this. I mean, I think this is an amazing uh, phrase, uh, amazing quote by Michael Ray. Do you want me to read it out to you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Drugs and gene therapies that destroy senescent cells can restore exercise capacity, lung function, and formation of new blood and immune pre precursor cells of aging mice to nearly their youthful norm. <laughs> Senolytic drugs and gene therapies have ameliorated the side effects of chemotherapy drugs in mice and prevented or treated mouse models of disease of aging such as osteoarthritis, fibrotic lung disease, hair loss, primary cancer and the recurrence after the chemotherapy, atherosclerosis and age-related diseases of the heart itself, as well as preventing Parkinson's disease and very recently frontotemporal dementia, a kind of cognitive aging driven by intracellular aggregates of tau protein which are also important drivers of Alzheimer's dementia. He works for the Sense Foundation. Uh, I saw him at the conference in 2009. He's a super sharp guy. He's also the um, co-author of this book, Ending Aging, which was written 10 years ago, but it's still super relevant. Um, he's, he's 
summarized, I guess it's quite technical, but he summarized what semantics do. And we might ask, has this semantic stuff come out of nowhere? No, it hasn't come out of nowhere. I mean, it is exploding at the moment. But the first, I guess, inkling of semantics was when the realization in the 1950s that senescent cells cause damage. Then Aubrey de Grey added it to sense as, as kind of damage we have to remove in 2001. Um, then in the late, oh, 2008, we had uh, Campisi, Judith Campisi, who did some more research on, on senolytics. She usually works in telomerase, tel telomeres and cancer. Uh, finally, in 2011, there was a good proof of concept in mouse models where senolytics worked and improved health span and lifespan. There was a much better proof of concept in 2016. Both of these proof of concepts were at the Mayo Clinic, one by James Kirkland, the other one by Van Dersen and Baker. But the 2016 breakthrough, which was a, a much better example of, of effective semolytics, made the industry explode. So, so, so which, which industry, it's not hair loss, right? Which, which industry is the most popular? Uh, well, you see, hair loss comes from aging, oh, okay. right? So the point is, it's probably more complicated than that. Let's talk to a bi biologist. Testosterone, maybe you become a, sensitive to testosterone as you as you get older, something like that. Um, so I've explained why now. There are other celebrated anti-aging therapies that are just coming out now. For example, metformin, rapamycin, resveratrol. Uh, nicotinamide riboside, yeah. I take nicotinamide riboside. Um, but the problem with these therapies are, or the concern with them, is that they are actually mimicking a really good diet and exercise regime. And a really good diet and exercise regime isn't really going to help you long term with your health span. I, I would happily take all of them, mind you. <laughs> but um, that's the concern. That's why Senolytics is seen as the first real almost available human regeneration product. These are some of the entities involved. Apart from the Mayo Clinic, the Mayo Clinic is still doing, it's doing a whole bunch of research, lots of different research, research like on human trials, but the Mayo Clinic are usually doing it on publicly available or easily available senolytics. Unity Biotechnology, Oshin Biotechnologies, they're developing novel therapies, novel senolytics, which are supposed to be much better than the currently available ones. You might ask, well, what are these currently available ones? This is one of them, Fisetin. Um, the Mayo Clinic has done a lot of research using Fisetin and Mac rats. They're doing one now with humans. Uh, this was, the reason why they can do it in humans now is because it's gone through trials in the past as a therapy for cancer and other related pathologies. So it's really easy for them to use. They don't have to worry about the safety aspects um, Fisetin is probably the best performing senator currently. It has, for example, in mouse models, it gave a 38% increase in health span and lifespan in the mouse model. Funnily enough, you cannot buy Fisetin at the moment. I've tried to buy Fisetin. It's all on back order. <laughs> like, there are a lot of people out there self-testing. These are the other things that were well, the other available senolytics. My cousin is actually on this. But it's for his, he's got scoliosis, it's for his back. Quercetin only works in conjunction with dasatinib, but it's almost as powerful as fisetin. Uh, the issue is that we do not know how well they work in humans. That's what all the studies are. But for these products, who knows what's happening with Unity Biotechnologies, how efficacious they are. Um, so before I get to the action statements, Senolytics, in my view, and I was telling Peter the other day, this is uh, this is just out of nowhere, and it's, I believe, an amazing breakthrough. Uh, it's going to be the first step in longevity, tr longevity treatments. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of longevity escape velocity. Anyone know what that is? Ex escape velocity. It's the idea, yes, it's the idea that if you create some sort of anti-aging treatment, then you live long enough for the next anti-aging treatment to be created. Um, and so, Senolytics, the first one, is uh, 
might give us 20 years or something like that while they work on other things like cancer or something. I mean, I mean some people have frozen themselves, right? This cryonics, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not. <laughs> yeah. 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 Aubrey de Grey, I mean, the creator of Sense, he's signed up for an American cryonics uh, company. What can you do if you find this interesting? Uh, you can educate yourself. Sense.org has lots of uh, content on their focus on aging. Fight Aging is an amazing resource. That guy, his name is Reese. I don't know his real name. <laughs> he, um, he's incredible. The amount of stuff he puts out. This book here is still, I mean, I'm not a biologist, but, and it is somewhat technical, but it's a super interesting read. Um, it's 10 years old now. Uh, Juvenescence is an investment company. I think it's in London. Uh, check them out if you're interested in, in investing within anti-aging. Undoing Aging Conference is in Berlin. It's the second year it's running. It's organized by the Sense Foundation. Uh, the, I'll tell you what, that first conference I went to it had free alcohol. But um, in other ways, it was, uh, it was actually super interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right, it was all about relaxing. Right? Um, the other thing you can do is crowd trials. There's lots of people out there who are interested in running crowd trials. Uh, I follow a guy called Josh Mitteldorf. He wants to get 10,000 people together and apply different types of anti-aging, not necessarily therapies, but also lifestyles. So even starting with something like meditation, exercise, diet, ketosis, working your way up to fisbicitin or the other analytics. Uh, Josh Mitteldorf, he's in America. Uh, but the fight aging guy talks about it as well. Um, and finally, some smart person can organize all the politics and build us some technology capability in anti-aging. <laughs> At your action list. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any oh, questions to Joe? Well, that's a lot more clear than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone on any, oh, sorry, yeah. Um, can I ask you to go back to that? Can you help me this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's one thing I want to check if it's on there. Sure. You know, I don't know if you know about um, yeah, that one. Uh, patient zero. There's a woman who put a telomerase, telomerase virus in herself uh, in order to lengthen the telomeres. She okay. has nine causes of damage. But, uh, so there's something missing here. Um, oh, there's a whole three or four list missing down below. Sorry. Because it's supposed to be seven. Should I try this, yeah. the PDF version? <laughs> yeah. Because, like, yeah, it, there's one thing that kind of stood out in some, like, like cell methylation is, as you get older, genes get turned on and off, get, get modulated based on environmental pressures, as well as, um, you know, even as you lose telomere length, it affects, like, the, the genes and the responses in those regions because of the availability. Of so you're saying it's DNA damage? It's not DNA damage, it's just the modulation of it. So, uh, why is this still there? Yeah, it still doesn't look like it's there. Um, and, I mean, like, you know, for example, a reason to reference alcohol is to reduce, for example, uh, uh, cell methylation to anybody. And it's a mass, it's one of the largest prognosis to detect, like, prognostic markers of various diseases of whether or not you're going to die or whether or not you would get a particular disease like cancer or mm. even some neurological disease mm. uh, as you age. So it, I found it fascinating it's not part of that. Yeah, kind any of mistakes in this presentation of mine? But, uh, oh, no, 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 I mean, it could be, it could be under the umbrella or something else, but that was not there. Maybe, yeah. and, maybe and you should give them a the email effect, and say, hey, you guys, you fucked up. One of the, yeah, so it's either, it's either a drug or a technology intervention to even change that. Mm. Uh, one of the first, uh, what's it? It's 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 yeah. yeah so that's an yeah. antimicrobial drug, right? So it slows down uh, cell replication, which can mm. help stop the damage to mm. cell replication. You get uh, damage to tell me you get that more meth like increased methylation usually in general, in general. and you mix it with things like destroying damaged cells. Mm. It's got that slight effect. Mm. Now in mice, that's kind of great. But I mean, we've cured multiple things in mice. Yeah, like exactly. seven I mean, the cancer model in mice is completely different. Right. So yeah. So that I think, 
the, yeah, there, there's a step there, yeah. and I'm not probably not the person to answer it, but the idea. Yeah, I mean, but the idea that ra we're not, or rather, semantics might not depend on a particular pathway within mice. It's potentially it's a more engineering approach in terms of it's the brute force removal of bad cells. However, that happens in humans, right? So I think the energy guys are working on removing uh, old um, cells in the knees that might cause you arthritis. Uh, somebody in the States, I think, might be working on cognitive deficiencies. Uh, but they're all going to be presumably quite different. And certainly targeting is going to be a big issue, right? Trying to target. I mean, people, the people who are self-testing are just figuring out, oh, a mice weighs this much, oh, I weigh 70 kilos, I have to uh, therefore take, you know, the whole bottle of pills in two days, right? In order to get, but it's kind of like they're just shooting in the dark, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, Anna yeah. had a video to share. Well, I, I was not very relevant to John's thing, so I thought I'd Oh no. Was oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What I told you about having. He said it was three minutes, so we'll stupid. give him ten. Three. <laughs> Most of you don't understand everything that we talk about here. I feel silly. <laughs> I don't understand it before. It's awesome. Right. So that's a startup actually called Vilify, and it's the health map. I thought it was very relevant. And uh, I was going to talk about it earlier, but I'll let my friend. Full screen first. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, first round of applause. No, how did you kick out the stage again? How did you, he's kicked off with the grave. So is this quick? Yeah, it's very quick. Can you hear that? Yeah, it's coming out of there. Okay, So basically, uh, I mean, it's, you're visualizing what you would look like if you didn't take certain actions. Uh, uh, your lifestyle. I mean, there's a Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 so, actually, so the United yeah. University is a startup from the Global Startup Program, <laughs> and uh, I was very fortunate to closely mentor them. And uh, we're actually just the reason I wanted to share also is to get a lot more ideas from you guys to take it to the next level. And what we've got is the health map visualized. Um, and uh, Daniel Popa, who's the founder there, uh, is really talking about what we can do. Um, so, you can see the health map, uh, you know, taking, uh, building different. The metrics based on questionnaires, fitness, nutrition, sleep. So it triggers based on your variables, intervals, and articles. Uh, but again, it's really how do you uh, project what um, uh, actions you need to take to not look like what you what you saw earlier in terms <laughs> of you know. So getting a full 3D view of what uh, you know you would look like in certain time frames is uh, is what we're seeing here, and. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just sort of pass over that because it's getting into a bit of detail. So looking at different health goals that you can, um, you know, uh, target, as you saw there. Different options, you know, actually, because I, again, he talks about it much better. See if you can hear it. <laughs> getting matches, basically, yeah. So it's pretty much building a holistic view of your well-being um, and your health from different um, multiple aspects and then of course using uh, you know so there, there you go mm -hmm. and getting a full visual of that i'd love to hear any ideas you try it back give a round for that round yeah. 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 Clearly, clearly there are uh, amazing stuff google is quite significant in um you know they're trying to you know treat death as a as a, an illness and everything and is it, I'm sure there's, what's the one they called? The Google's... Um, Calico. Calico. Like, then there's probably many, many other home, uh, hundreds of country, countries in other uh, nationalities as well, in China and Germany, all these places that are all, everyone is making massive um, um, inroads in, in health and understanding and the closer we get to the mind and the body, I'm just so excited by this next decade. I think it's actually gonna um, accelerate probably a lot faster. I think. Sometimes I feel like we need to stop talking about, as a futurist, stop talking about the future so much and worry about like next year. 
<laughs> because some of it's actually going to, we've actually got a lot of problems, like um, I've been raising with the law enforcement and the Supreme Court here, even just brain control interfaces, and there is actually no structure in the, in the New South Wales legal system that if I think of something and have something said, I'm going to kill you with it, there is no law for this. I know I mentioned it briefly one of the other things, but there are a lot of this tech that's coming that we're going to be able, it's going to, be able to misuse in many ways. So we've actually got to figure out how to actually integrate it into our society before we keep rolling too much and too fast because it's going to be an exponential trying to figure out how to deal with the legal sides of it all, rather than just shoot everybody. Yeah, I think that's super cool. Is this going to sound aging too? This might be a little bit controversial, but with, um, they've done the studies in the countries where people live a long and happy life in a state of good health is where ageing is revered, where it's, they see ageing as a sign of wisdom, whereas in the West, quite often, we see ageing. I agree with all those diseases and things. If you can cure those, that's fantastic, and people should have to suffer. But as a general overall thing, like, um, I think there's a movement now against seeing ageing as a bad, natural, healthy ageing, seeing that as a good thing. One thing I need to I want to remind everybody about because we, we we kind of don't think correctly. Okay. Like it's like about computers, such like computer security updates. You know, it's like we all think we're cool, but if you roll back one year and look down the bottom of all the updates, everything we cure will be replaced by something else. There is no nirvana of health. Yeah, we are going to create new, more dangerous, more scary, um, blended with biotech and. The thing that I'm Zach, you know, it's one thing. The only tech I fear is nanotech, the shit you can't see. And that's what actually worries me. You know, when they, they're like, oh, we can send them down your body and they can clear your arteries. Don't care. When they, when, they, when it's artificial intelligence and it's bots and they can actually change stuff and you cannot actually see them, whisper is your race. We actually, I think that's. And I don't, I'm not a problem with AI. I have a problem with nanotechnology. Um, but the problem is, is the law, the integration. And people think, always think about these things like, even in dystopian and utopian views, oh, but if we solve this, we solve this, we solve this, they all, they're, they're backfilled by other problems. The problem is people don't see them until that one's removed and see what replaces it. And, because there is no just killing off a problem. And I, I try to encourage people, like, um, like even as a futurist, like anyone that predicts them more out, more, out more than about 10 years, I tell them, they, you know, full shit. Because it's an exponential role. Like every time something major critical happens, that is exponential. If you try to go backwards from like what happened in 2015, 2049, and 2048, it's like unraveling a snowball. And it's just crap because we keep trying to forecast the future as though what we know now. And isn't that a bit stupid? Because what about what we know in 2020 and 2021? Everything builds on top of it. But we've got to actually try and understand that with spirituality, with, with everything, it's a role. Is it expensive or wrong? Um, can I just ask oh. the room again? So I know I asked this last time, but you just talked. So, <laughs> who is actually into biohacking? Like, basically what John was just talking about. Putting your uncle card in your yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's one aspect. I don't know, there's a lot of people here with glasses that look like they're in biohacking. Like, uh, <laughs> if you go to a chemist and use penadine, you're a biohacker. It's, it's <laughs> not a There's There's five pillars of biohacking. There's molecular biology, um, microbiology, uh, bioinformatics, um, equipment hacking, and grinding. Right? So if you have any of those things, grinding is like uh, plantables. Um, Who's here going to plantables? I smell a spinner. That kind of thing, right? So, so <laughs> yeah. Planting, planting. Meow, Meow and I came up with those pillars like two years ago. Like that's what we decided is like biohacking. And if you any of those things you can, you, and, and you'd like to do it outside of the normal establishment, that would be biohacking. Well, meow. It's not bowl of coffee. Sorry. <laughs> Bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. It's the like, like, opal card himself. Um, but Where is he? But, but I anyone disagree. Can, anyone I'm not saying casual bulletproof coffee, but like my thing with biohacking is just taking panadine doesn't make you a biohacker. No, no, it's a it's scientific it's approach. If you take it on the that's not like the biology. biology. If, you, if you go to the mi mi like the micro and molecular biology side of that, then totally fine. 
the point is if it's uh, oh, yeah, it's it, well, it's well, it's well, some well, of well. the drugs you talked about, are they like public knowledge and the ingredients that we have to synthesize in ourselves? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, why wait for fentanyl? No, the problem is it's, it's made to apply a chemical like, process, which is hard to mimic as a synthetic compound. It just hasn't, hasn't been done at a scale. We're working on some patent of using that cheaply. I read it when. Because it's not sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's not sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's not sweet. Oh, well, everyone knows why smart drugs went over, right? Why motorphenol and everything went, strawberry like, strawberry went like in the last three years? What did? Because motorphenol and R uh, uh, motorphenol and all the smart drugs. Because the patents ran out. And the Indian manufacturers just went, Go. we're going to start manufacturing it ourselves. And the patents. The innovation. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, now have we got something over here? Yeah. Emmanuel? Alright. Thanks for that. Uh, no, we're applause for the instructions. So, everyone, so the talks are sort of concluded, but we're going to do a mini hackathon if you guys are interested in running artificial intelligence and finding a use case in how to improve our healthy, healthy lives. So, uh, imagine if someone's got a startup called Deep Sleep, and it's about how do we use things like deep learning and artificial intelligence to improve the way we sleep? How, how do we increase our healthy lifespans? And, so I'll just do a quick introduction to uh, uh, Emmanuel, let him introduce himself. But it's Let's give a round of applause for Emmanuel. Yeah. Uh, is his voice big enough to, what is it, what for? Yeah. Yeah? Can you project the next? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll oh, maybe just use that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, hold that. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. It may be a bit higher, ne next to the neck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hi, I'm Emmanuel, and I'm trying to build a startup in uh, mental health, uh, and sort of looking at uh, different uh, uh, pathologies of mental health. So, uh, looking, so looking at the symptoms of mental health, maybe uh, 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 utilizing uh, 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 Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Technology. Technology. Toys. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so, um, so currently, I I have an idea to uh, uh, use. Well, my background first. My background is uh, like uh, machine learning and uh, a little bit of machine learning, uh, a lot of Python programming, like a lot of, and um, I've taken courses in computer science and things like that. But, um, but um, anyways, uh, let me start with my presentation. Oh, there is a presentation. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> it's a very short presentation because I was, I was trying to build a demo, but it's complicated. That's all we did for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, deep learning for healthy sleep is a uh, non-wearable uh, uh, computer vision system to track uh, sleep, right? And uh, currently, uh, often for tracking sleep are either non-wearable or wearable. Uh, the wearable devices have problems with uh, sleep, sleep hygiene and the effort to uh, need to have to uh, charge the device. So, um, in some cases where mental health is a problem, needing to charge the device is, uh, is, a, is a challenge because you might not feel so good, you might feel unhappy, uh, depressed, and, um, and, it, uh, and so you, you, might, you, you might not want to charge your device, right? But, um, and also the current offerings for uh, 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 non wearable devices are uh, uh, um, like, sorry. Uh, Don't apply any deep learning. So, <laughs> yeah, so. and the current offerings for <laughs> non wearable devices don't apply any deep learning. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I wouldn't utilize a deep learning uh, being the same as you in yeah. complex settings. Yeah. So, any, please, please ask questions. I, I, the presentation was really terrible, so ask questions. Is that the end of the presentation? Yeah, nice. We, we should call the office of a deep learning shallow learning. Right? And that's a bit shallow learning. So, it's called linear aggression. Yeah, so put your hands up, maybe. Oh, sorry. Yeah, what do you mean, um, non wearables and deep learning? So, there's non wearables, right? They have, you have non wearables, and that allows you to not have to charge it, and it just kind of watches you while you sleep. And the problem with that, they don't, they don't apply any deep learning. So when you say you're not applying deep learning, right. can you explain deep learning? Sorry, so deep learning is uh, a system to uh, analyze complex domain systems where it's really 
hard to uh, approximate, like like systems that are like just hard. Anything that's hard and uh, hard data, like Buton is really good for that. Recognizing right. patterns. I think it's more around deep neural networks. Yeah. Is it a fundamental possibility to apply deep learning to non variables? So, but, uh, maybe no. deep, so, so, right, so it's not just deep learning, it's just it's a, a mixture of deep learning and many other algorithms, so anything, but deep learning is uh, just a very good yeah, But I'm asking why, right. is it possible to apply deep learning to non wearables? Is it well, it's, it's, possible, yeah. it's possible, yes. It's possible. So yeah. You, you apply deep learning to it. Yeah. 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 You apply deep learning to it. Literally, deep learning is, has been useful for, for any kind of right. But what's the key, Emmanuel, what's the key link between sleep and mental health? So, sleep and mental health, it's simple. It's a, it's a symptom of, uh, in, in many cases, a symptom of uh, having bad mental health. Okay. Um, and and now analyzing that may be able to help you do what? Uh, like with, with this kind of like with certain sensors and everything's going to be able to uh, uh, figure out what the problem is. Yeah, just just uh, uh, diagnose uh, your uh, your severity. So, is it if you're because if you're having serious mental health. And why is and so deep learning is important because we don't sleep the same way each night. You have to analyze many factors, temperatures. For, so you, yeah. which we just, you know, we do not have the ability to do so. You get to a sleep. You can go to a sleep yeah. center. And, and you're unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Could you, you can go to, yeah. just as a primer? Could, could you describe like so far what your ideal device or product would look like? Right. So and how it works. It's a, it's, it's a computer vision system that would. Uh, Sort of, it's a camera that would be on, on, on the ceiling would be bad, and it would just watch you and, and apply deep learning. Yeah. So okay. analyze your feet. So when you're talking about deep learning in sleep context, right. it's about giving the data you get from the sleep and then the neural networks that are Useful data. Right, so right. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to track the REM sleep. So during REM sleep, you're not really moving much in your sleep life. You're, you're in paralysis actually. And then, and then the, the uh, computer vision system uh, would uh, be able to uh, uh, detect this. How do you, how do you uh, track REM sleep with camera? So, so the camera just watches you, right? And then, uh, when it's watching you, it can, it can tell whether or not you're moving, right? What's your motion? Right, and, and then um, once it can once it can ascertain motion, it can then tell you uh, what uh, whether or not you're in paralysis. But you can also have other data inputs to help you measure. Right, yeah. So, so one other input would be um, uh, snoring. If you're snoring, so okay. so, yeah. acoustic yeah. movement. Yeah. And That's if you actually do wear a sleep tracker, then you've got heart rates and a whole bunch of other things. Right. And deep learning, I, and I agree. Deep learning is. We can't really do it without deep learning on an individual, individual basis. Otherwise, it's like going, you know, close trials, blah. Like, it's so individual because, A, who's got what bed? Who spent $10,000 on a bed? Yeah. Who's got those phone things that's helping them do this? And, I mean, so it's going to be your environment is actually going to be important. Has he got a quilt where he's slightly allergic to duck feathers, which is causing an irritation? Like, you think you're going to need to, like, obviously, um, so have you got a sort of a model on how to... Yeah. Um, analyze the many inputs and like so, if you add a new input, right. like okay, I'll get a sense that that can do. So Emmanuel actually has sleep yeah. apnea. No, no, no. Well, not apnea. Um, what do you have for sleep? Uh, so I have insomnia sometimes. Insomnia, yeah. 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 I have insomnia and oversleeping. So either insomnia or oversleeping. So it's insomnia, and then I have to like oversleep. And one of the things you're doing now to, to help to help with that. Are you analyzing your own patterns with yeah. the deep so, learning? Currently, what I try to do. Um, is uh, no, not stress myself out too much. But but if I had something, <laughs> so, <laughs> so do you use it something to measure stress? I, I I don't do that. But um, what I would like to do is be able to track sleep right while, while I'm sleeping, and then if I ever have an episode, you can tell me, hey, you're having an episode, and I can you know track it historically, and I, I can say I've been having these many episodes, and it's. So do you think that the deep, deep learning gets better and better the more sources of input, like whether right, it be right, a right. device or a camera? Does anyone have um, sleep issues right right now? Right? Jeez, that's, that's a good has, 20% have, 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 Those who have, have you heard of ASMR? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Cardi B, oh my god. So who would pay for something to help you with the sleep? I do. My still not doesn't work because all the Red Bull I drink with it.
Okay. Okay. Is, 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 actually, yes. is diet a big factor in that as well? Yes, yes. diet is. And autoimmune deficiencies. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on, on sleep, but I can tell you that. Um, yeah, but you, you kind of are ah, because you are a sufferer and right. you see a lot more than someone who's not. Right, yes. So, okay. I, yeah, right. You, you diet, You've got a bit of starting point. Diet, diet stress, and. Um, Oh, what else? And, um, well, I mean, so what you're saying is that there's literally analyzing sleep hormones, which is incredibly important to mental health, is is impossible without deep learning and proper algorithms analyzing many inputs and because yeah, we right. just can't do it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and every person's unique. Right. Yeah. So the, the, the sort of um, um, value proposition is that it's a fine new time, right? And it's a non wearable. So when it's a non wearable, you don't, you don't have to, you know, like, I think we typically yeah. have to start with the problem first. So the right. problem is to help you sleep better, right? Right, exactly. Okay. And then, and no, no, not help you sleep better, but just track your sleep. That's all it's called. No, the problem I'm is so to help you I just don't sleep. Right, that, 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 that's, on that's on your part. Yeah, I mean, so typically when you start a business or try to kind of come up with the <laughs> idea to help solve things, right? It's right. like starting the problem. Right, right. So you frame it as what is the pain point? So yeah, right? Right? if you take that mindset, okay. but yeah. you don't think you're trying to solve something. Mm. There are many apps that already track sleep right. in a different way, That's right. but they involve either attaching something to your face or like your body mm. or your wrist, and people are kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. So a non-wearable is has an advantage there for not doing it, but That's also right. they don't have to charge it. But yeah, but also like if you think about like the intervention part is mm. at the moment still even human based, right? Like it's you see the data. Oh, I had a bad amount of sleep, and it's the person doing the interpretation of. What was it that gave you the bad sleep? They just see the data. There's no actual input of you did this differently or did that differently yeah. or whatever. Like some of them track sound over the night and they go, oh, there was a loud noise at three in the morning and then you woke up briefly and then went back to sleep. Yeah. Those things already exist, but actually integrating it into like lifestyle, like every other data point you have access to. Yeah, it's a quantified something. Yeah, but those complex things don't have, for example, deep learning like added to them to that. Yes. that Categorical mm. potential to try this or that. That's or right. I, I, I have conversations with Emmanuel and Shanti and others about, mm. about the value. Who here thinks sleep is incredibly important to their health? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for the last two years, I go I go between three to five days without sleep. What? So, well, well, I, am I, do I have any problems? Is that a deliberate? Yeah. <laughs> you deliberately yep. sleep? Yep. I think we have a I have, three, I have five times as much more hours <laughs> in my day than any of you here. So two years. Yeah. Like, two years. Two years I've been doing this. Oh, I mean, so what was your name? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit slow. Come on. How much time you spent on coffee? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing. So I mean, so the purpose of the I'm at a veil. My death is smart drugs. The purpose of this session is to help Emmanuel make that. Oh no, no, I could say one of the solutions for mental health is don't sleep. I mean, but I'm not, right. saying, I'm not saying it's actually a valid one. No, I'm saying I'm saying the solution I'm, to help the manual yeah, come, yeah. make that because it's because it's really it's really important because it's like everything else where we say we, suddenly we're like, oh, hey, actually, cholesterol is not so bad. Yeah. We actually know so little about sleep yeah. and the amount of impacting factors. And and when I tell people that, I actually like what was the what, how many days was I got up to? I got up to six days without sleep. Um, so, um, uh, before that's like, that's when I started working the walls. Um, uh, uh, hold on. I think what actually happened, like, so the actual problem, so the solution, well, what you're trying to do is help you sleep better. Right. The actual problem is you fucked up sleep. So, what you have to do, like, the start of any project is what fucks with sleep. And honestly, you would have to track yourself all day, every day. Like, you have to know what you eat. Um, like, so many things affect sleep, and sleep affects so many things. So, so what you would... Like the ideal study would be to have people on cameras all day, every That's what the sleep study is for, yeah. No, 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 that's a, like sleep studies, yeah, most of them. Like sleep studies, you go into a lab and it's just you go it's so It was like, during your day when you were awake. Yeah. How much you exercise, what you do, if you do nothing, if you do a lot, what you right. eat, it's going to impact your and sleep you too. Have to honestly, exactly. input that data, which like no one does. The right? objective so, with, yeah. with this project is to track sleep with uh, respect to mental health. So, yeah. really looking at the pathology of mental health yeah. with respect to sleep. Oh, so, so you mean like 
if you have a practice, like, does it impact your mm -hmm. mental health? Yeah, exactly. But then so you, you think have you to can be able to objectively to measure your health, mental health on that day. Right. Or not. So I'm, I'm looking at uh, severe cases of mental health, right? So, so, so not, uh, you know, sort of uh, like, you know, sort of the mean of, of uh, the, uh, sorry, the average person, you know, uh, tracking uh, their, um, uh, their, like, their well-being. It's more like severe cases, right? So, well, sleep, sleep deprivation is part of torture. So, so, and actually having bad sleep and not necessarily things is, can actually does actually lead to med like there's a massively tied link between um, mental health and that because so depression is a form of torture. So what you're saying is you're a Sleep deprivation if you don't have assistance and everything. Trying to figure out what it does. Exactly. Right. exactly. So okay, so who has senses or uh, software knowledge or sort of deep learning skill sets that can help? You know, sort of. Ideate and also co op with products to help. Right. Manage. Does anyone think of a skill set that they have that might be able to help? Okay. Yes, we've been talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, one of the, like, on that the point of like mental health and like severe cases, not just the average person. I mean, like, for example, if people that suffer with complex diseases, like chronic pain um, diseases, that, you know, they, they found that sleep, for example, is super important in how much energy they have in the day to. Function. Right. Um, you know, when you're talking on that level of like mental health and maintaining some other disease and then how that works, like sleep is an important factor. People like this guy and myself, yeah. potentially, sleep is, an, is something you can actually play with and it doesn't feel like it. It's like this could be anything doesn't, that does what I'm like. Yeah, like, it doesn't cause habit. I don't like, like sleep doesn't bother. Like, like, yeah, they, they miss a night of sleep or they have one hour reduced sleep in their entire day the next day is entirely obliterated. So right. it's super important, like, like the amount of energy like, the, like the, they need to put a lot in to make sure they maximize that output and that feeds into everything. So for those people it would be super important, I can, I can imagine. Now, when it comes down to like the system you're trying to make, it sounds to me like it's the amalgamation of a lot of existing technology that hasn't quite come to this point, like you have right. projectors that have built-in Google Home, right? Like because they're linking like two systems to make them, you know, one. The sleep system, I think I think I told, told you this before. Like if it's something that sits above a bed, it's a camera system, or you know, whatever. Um, you know, for example, doubling is like a sound system to be able to play music, or like some people, like you were talking about ASMR, going to sleep. Like for example, people listen to like some music. I use like different light, I have uh, the Philips Hue lights, and I input like pedantically like um, the scheduling for my light system, different colors at different times. It, it wakes me up in the morning because my whole room's like blackout, so you can't see the sun.